Devontae Adams is my number one wide receiver this year and my fifth overall player in fantasy. Last year, Adams posted at least 16 fantasy points in all 15 games he played. And he gets a ton of scoring chances in that Green Bay offense. Over the last three years, he leads the NFL with 26 red zone touchdown catches. Given Adams' production and the connection with Aaron Rodgers, he's my number one because of his floor. But as Daniel will sadly never hear, there's not a ton of difference to me between Adams and the rest of the top-tier wide receivers that are right on his heels. For me, the top tier ends at Tyreek Hill, my number seven wide receiver. All these guys you see on your screen have the talent and opportunity that virtually guarantees wide receiver one production if they stay healthy. Now, while Adams, Hopkins, and Thomas likely won't last through round one, at least based on current ESPN ADP, you can land some of the other top tier guys. Beckham, Julio Jones, Juju, Tyree Kill in the second round. And that's why I lean more towards taking a running back in the first round than a receiver. A stud running back and say Julio Jones in the second, much better than say a wide receiver in the first and a question mark like Melvin Gordon, who's currently going in the second. I agree, Matthew. D Daniel, didn't your, didn't your head explode? Can we have some continuity on the show for, for Pete's sake? Oh, you're right. Sorry. Before the foot thing happened, and before the helmet thing happened, and before whatever new controversy occurs between right now and when this show airs happened, Antonio Brown was already on my hate list. Why? Pretty simple. A.B. moving from a good Pittsburgh offense to a not-so-good Raiders offense. Over the last two years, Oakland ranks 30th in red zone drives and 24th in red zone passing percentage. Look, they're going to be better than this, but still, they won't be as efficient or as high scoring as peak Pittsburgh. So, don't expect Antonio Brown to get a lot of short scoring opportunity. By the way, moving to Oakland means moving on to Derek Carr. Last year, Carr averaged the fewest air yards per attempt of any QB and ranked 24th in completion percentage on deep passes. Remember, 40% of Antonio Brown's fantasy points the last two years have come from the deep pass. But those concerns are already baked into his current ADP of 21 overall, meaning he's going late in the second, early third as wide receiver eight. I have him as my wide receiver nine, so I don't hate that. There is potential to be had there, but obviously only if he plays. And honestly, I have no idea anymore if he's going to suit up. So coming in at wide receiver eight for me, it's Mike Evans. Very excited about what Bruce Arians is going to bring to this offense. We know Jameis Winston is a sleeper for me. Mike Evans led the NFL with 33 deep receptions in 2018, three more than anyone else. And again, you know an Arians offense is all built around those deep passes. Wide receiver nine, Antonio Brown. We already talked about him with Adam Schefter. The reason he's down here, in addition to everything else, the guy was the number one wide receiver for so many years, but now there's risk with Antonio Brown where there wasn't before. It's just what kind of player are you? At number 10, and I certainly wouldn't fault you if you drafted him over Antonio Brown, is Keenan Allen. He's one of only three players with 95 catches and at least six receiving touchdowns each of the past two seasons. Antonio Brown, DeAndre Hopkins, the only other two. So pretty good company to be in there for the Charger. Julian Edelman comes in at number 11. His last 16 regular season games without Rob Gronkowski in the lineup, which is what will happen this year, 114 catches on 180 targets for over 1,300 yards and three touchdowns. We expect the touchdown rate to go up. Edelman, money in the bank, although the addition of Josh Gordon certainly hurts his upside a little bit. Number 12, here comes Adam Thielen. You know what? Listen, he was a top six fantasy wide receiver for six straight games last year. But outside the top 20 and seven of his final eight, I know there's concern about the run-heavy nature of Minnesota's offense, but still talented, got paid this offseason, one of the best wide receivers in football. I think he is a very fine top 12 wide receiver. Number 13, T.Y. Hilton. We, we, uh, we know there's some concern about Andrew Luck, but Jacoby Brissett, a pretty good backup. Remember Hilton, over the past five years, 16.4 yards per catch. That leads all players with at least 250 catches. Again, second year of Frank Reich's system. Should be another big year for T.Y. And at number 14, Amari Cooper. He was wide receiver nine in terms of total points, Daniel. And on a per game basis, wide receiver 12 in his nine games with Dallas last season. On a full off season to get into that Cowboys offense and more of a connection with Dak, Amari Cooper should have another big year. And finally, wide receiver 15, ending the second tier of wide receivers for me is Stephon Diggs. Uh, end of the season strong, right? Scored in three straight, six of his final eight games. Injury is always a concern with Diggs. That's why I have Hill, uh, Thielen just a little bit higher than him. But when he's healthy, he's as good as there is in the NFL. 
So your top tier wide receivers are all superstars, okay? The second tier has its share of set it and forget it types as well. But once you get past that range, once you get past those top 15 or so receivers, that's where the decisions really start to get tough. But it's also where you can land a league winner who far outperforms his ADP. Think about Juju Smith-Schuster last year, right? He had an ADP of 52.1, but finished as wide receiver eight, and he was on 31% of championship teams on ESPN. So let's, let's find our new Juju, our new new, if you will, or even if you won't. One receiver I love this year with that kind of potential, Chris Godwin. Last year, Godwin, wide receiver 27, despite ranking just 52nd among wide receivers in routes run. With Deshaun Jackson and Adam Humphreys now gone, expect a ton more volume for Godwin. Or how about my little Cooper Cup? Last year, Cup averaged the fifth highest yards per target among qualified wide receivers, and he was wide receiver 11 on a per game basis for all of his full games. And then there's DJ Moore, who last season led all wide receivers in yards per catch after the reception. And in the three games that he saw at least seven targets, Moore averaged over 19 fantasy points. Okay, I know everyone loves Curtis Samuel, but give me DJ Moore in Carolina. DJ Moore ends my third tier of wide receivers, which looks like this. So this tier is filled with Rams and guys named Tyler. In fact, depending on what you do at quarterback, you could call your team two Tylers and a Kyler. That's what I call hashtag analysis. Tune into the Fantasy Show with Matthew Berry all season long, streaming exclusively on ESPN+. Hey guys, thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more great ESPN streaming content, download the ESPN app and subscribe to ESPN+.